Hi, I'm John Forty. Coming up next on the St. Paul Forum, I'll be speaking with Damian Goebel and Julie Wong about the upcoming event, St. Paul Open Streets. That's next on the St. Paul Forum. Welcome to the St. Paul Forum. I'm John Forty. Today I'll be speaking with Damian Goebel and Jun Lee Wong about the Open Streets event coming up this fall in St. Paul. Welcome, you guys. Thanks for having us. I'm going to read your official titles. Damian Goebel, Marketing, Communications, and Outreach Director for St. Paul Smart Trips. That's me. And Jun Lee Wong, Artist, Community Organizer, Springboard for the Arts. Yep. Okay, now I know who you are. Okay. So tell me about this, not about the event yet, but, but something touched you. Well, you don't even know each other. You just met like 20 minutes ago, right? Okay. Surprisingly. Yeah, but, but you're aligned, mm -hmm. and you each have stories as to how you got here. So, Damien, how did you get here? Did you grow up in the, in the state? I did. I am from St. Paul. I uh, grew up on the east side of St. Paul, and I came to the, the organization St. Paul Smart Trips um, through the RNC, as a matter of fact. Uh, so started interning there, um, directly doing outreach around how people could get to downtown. Mm -hmm. um, and from there, started working with employers in downtown and have sort of evolved into working on a lot of events and all of our, our marketing for the organization. Um, and came to Open Streets because uh, organizationally we really care about active transportation and that's part of the event is being able to bike and walk, skate on University Avenue. Okay. Jun Lee? So I'm thinking about what Damien said and uh, I came here, I'm, I'm a transplant from California and I moved here about 11 years ago and since then I've been a community organizer really working in St. Paul. And what brings me here today in Open Streets is that I work for Springboard for the Arts, which is an economic development organization for artists. And we help artists make a living and a life. And one of the programs that we have is really about how artists interact with their communities and how communities can support their artists. And so when we come to an event like Open Streets, we believe that artists have a role to play in enlivening spaces. Um, so we currently have a large project called Irrigate happening along the corridor while light rail is being constructed. And with Open Streets, we thought we would um, bring artists to the event, so to speak, and help them um, demonstrate what they can do in public space. Irrigate is such a great title. It's like a, it's like a license to dribble. But, <laughs> but, but, what, 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 is, what is meant by Irrigate? It's, right. it's to help, help grow. Yes. And what exactly are you helping Drew grow there? So because our organization really is focused on artists and the role of artists, Irrigate is about identifying and recognizing local artists, so artists who are here from the neighborhoods, from St. Paul, and help supporting them so that they can work with businesses, small nonprofits, large nonprofits, to look at whatever it is those other organizations or businesses are doing in an artistic, creative, innovative way. Um, so we have trained over 500 local artists in this idea of placemaking, which maybe we should talk about a little more um, because that really is what Open Streets is. Um, so, so Irrigate is this, this project that engages local artists in this. There are many other facets, um, but that's the main one. So over the last two years, we've had over about 150 artists do these small projects along light rail line. Um, so at Open Streets, we'll have maybe five or so of these projects. Okay. One of the things that makes this sort of a unique interview is the fact that there's no organization behind this. How, how, what do you know about the history of it? How did it get rolling? I, I know to some extent where Minneapolis did something similar first. Correct. But right. what's, what's the history? Who, who, who gave it the big shove and then everybody joined in? Yeah, so it really came um, from the ward offices along University Avenue, the city council ward offices. Um, saw what Minneapolis was doing, saw how construction was impacting some of the businesses along University Avenue, um, and knowing that construction is just about over, they wanted some kind of culminating event to really celebrate what was going on with the construction of the Green Line. Um, so they brought this idea forward to a group of folks, um, myself, 
Springboard um, Asian Ac Economic Development Association, the district councils uh, along the avenue, and started pulling together a, a strong coalition of people to pull this event off. Um, and the idea was, you know, not only to showcase University Avenue and the businesses there, but to also have a healthy living aspect behind it. Um, bring in people who may have been turned away during construction or been scared away during construction, and new people to the avenue as well to really see what university has to offer. Um, so before we go even further into how this came to be, maybe we should nail down exactly what the event is. It is the St. Paul Open Streets event, September 15th. Mm -hmm. Hours? Uh, 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. Okay, and what can people expect at the event? Oh, there'll be fun uh, is the short version of it. Um, we'll have uh, entertainment, three stages, um, an uh, education stage that'll have programming on it, um, a historic Rondo and Frogtown stage that'll have um, community artists performing at it, and a little Mekong stage that'll have local artists performing at it as well. Um, several, uh, I think upwards of 50 businesses are participating in some way at this point, either by having specials that day or having some kind of presence on the avenue to let people know that they exist. Uh, and several outside organizations as well um, around sustainable transportation, um, education, health and wellness. Um, there'll be demonstrations of Nice Ride will be there demonstrating how to use the bikes, um, pop-up art. Demonstrations will be there, yoga, um, martial arts demonstrations, all kinds of different things going on. Okay. There's a key feature of this event that I don't think I've made explicit early enough, and that is that it's named ironically, right, because it's not open to cars. They're Correct. closing the street to cars. That's, that's why they call it open, like safe streets almost. You don't have to double look. Although apparently the, the confluence of pedestrians and bicyclists um, keeps the pot stirring can be a challenge sometimes, I think, but um, for the most part, so Minneapolis has done this, I think, seven times or six times mm -hmm. with one more to come okay. um, This yet this year. Uh, if they did four or have done three events this year, planning to do four, uh, and they seem to manage. They have large crowds and people have to navigate uh, the bikes and the pedestrians have to navigate one another, but largely it's about managing your speed on the bicycle. It's not a race. It's a fun event for the family to come out and see what's going on in university. Okay. Um, and the precise hours again? 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. 11 to 6, so it's seven hours long, and maybe we should give the precise location. It's between Marion and Hamlin? And Hamlin, correct. Okay. Uh, and there will be vehicular ac access for, on Dale and Lexington. Okay, so they can cross they there can cross and be transiting. There, correct. Okay. Okay. And vendors, I mean, is, is, is festive like a fair? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a giant street fair, basically. Okay. So um, we've engaged most of the businesses in, in the area that's uh, the closure area, so from Marion to Hamlin, as well as several other businesses along the Green Line that are going to be there showing their wares. Okay. And what parts of this event are we stealing from Minneapolis because it worked there? You know, I think mostly it's the, the open streets part of it, right? The biking and walking part of it. This is, largely it's going to be a little bit different than some of the Minneapolis events. Um, substantially because there's a brand new rail running right down the middle of the road that they didn't have at any of the Minneapolis events. Uh, so logistically that is a little more challenging but also is a little more exciting. People can see what the light rail is going to be like, uh, experience crossing the street, how the tracks are going to work, how it interacts with everything else on university. Um, and I think truthfully it seems like we have a little bit more participation of some of the, organ the businesses and organizations along university too. Um, you know, the, a lot of the areas that they did, the open streets events in Minneapolis, weren't as densely populated, both in terms of residential and uh, mm -hmm. commercial. Um, so there's just more going on, or potentially more going on. Now, Jun Lee or either of you, do you know the, the logistics of what goes into this? I mean, the, this part of the streets have to be closed, <laughs> there are barriers, there are monitors. <laughs> All of the above, okay. yes. Um, it is quite the process to close two and a half miles of the busiest street in the city. Um, so there um, are road closure signs. Uh, we have, we're staffing volunteers at some of the side streets to make sure cars don't drive through. Uh, working on par parking for not only the, the residents, but also vendors and volunteers and how everyone can access the street. But we have a lot of really good partners in this too. Uh, Metro Transit is providing free passes, downloadable passes to the event. Um, like I said, Nice Ride is going to be there explaining how their bikes work. Uh, we're going to have a bike corral 
uh, for bike parking as well as additional bike mm -hmm. parking at all of the stages um, and producing a map to show where all of the events are going to be happening throughout the corridor. Um, now, now, Carol, our producer, has just brought the map on screen, so you guys can actually turn your heads and look at it, because sure. until she brings it down, we're doing a radio yeah. show. <laughs> <laughs> you can just relax a little bit. But there are all those icons. What, what are the icons? Are they different businesses? Are they different uh, types of business? Yeah, so ultimately, this map will be a handout at the event, um, and it'll, it'll be even more detailed than what you see here. This okay. is a, a draft version of the map. The icons show activations. Um, so things that are going to be happening at the event. So things like where the bathrooms are, for example, are on the, on the map, mm -hmm. um, but also where the stages are um, or what sort of other events are going to be going on. So there are going to be some bike events, cooking demonstrations, um, like I said, martial arts demonstrations. Those kind of things will all be identified on the map as well as all of the businesses that are participating will be listed on the map as well. So the idea behind this map is that it's a takeaway piece so that when someone comes to Open Streets, when they want to come back to university, they know where they're going. Uh, so we worked with a, a, a local artist to produce the, the illustrations for the map, um, highlighting some of the landmarks on University Avenue, uh, and then we'll be designating along the route sort of where those individual businesses are um, and what offerings they had for the day as well. Okay, and June Lee, have you walked that route yet? Have I walked that yeah. route yet? <laughs> uh, I have walked many pieces of that route, but I can't say that I've walked the entirety. Um, I think what's really interesting about this is, you know, it's a two and a half mile stretch, and, and you know, I live in St. Paul, I live right off of that stretch, and I always, even though I have favorite restaurants, I often forget exactly where they are. Uh -huh. And so having this map, I think, will be a great resource not only on that actual day, but afterwards, you're like, where, where was that restaurant that I stopped at and had that great egg roll or spring mm -hmm. roll or whatever? Mm -hmm. And you can go back to that map. So I'm, I think this is really exciting and probably a slightly different way of doing open streets than, than in other places. So this is sort of an intersection of, of public affairs as well as the commercial aspect. I mean, the, the local chamber must be driving this to some extent. Yeah, the, uh, both the Midway and the St. Paul Chamber are both very involved in, in the process. Uh, and I mentioned the Asian Economic uh, Development Association as well is pretty involved in it as well. Um, and they're, they're really invested in trying to get their businesses to participate because it is an excellent free marketing campaign for them, basically. Okay. Um, so we've been talking about what it takes to get this event to happen. What about the long-term effects? Is this something that will be repeated annually? Will it be repeated at all? Can we do it every week? I know you, you're, you're <laughs> eager to work that hard. I would love to do one every week. Um, I, I think ideally, yeah, we would love to do it um, annually and potentially grow it in the way that Minneapolis has. Um, so Minneapolis started, the first year they did it was three years ago, and they did it on an Open Streets event on Lindale Avenue uh, for, a, I think it was about a mile and a half. And it was very successful. Um, so they did it again a second year on Lindale Avenue, and the city of Minneapolis sort of took notice and said, we want to be involved in this, but we want it to be in other places. Mm -hmm. um, so they've grown it to be four events this year instead of just the one. And I think long term, um, the, there is some hunger for that in St. Paul as well. Okay. It, 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 to some extent, it reminds me of grand old days. I mean, you've got a fairly long strip that's blocked off, and they get 100,000 people. Yeah, we're not expecting that many, okay. um, to be very honest. Um, but to some degree, yes, it is similar to, to Grand Old Day. Um, Grand Old Day is largely focused almost exclusively on showcasing Grand Avenue as mm -hmm. uh, a shopping destination. Mm -hmm. And that's a very big part of what we're trying to do here, too. But also, we want to show off the new infrastructure that's involved and make it about families biking and walking and being active on University Avenue. Okay. Um, so we've got new infrastructure coming. When does the, the, the Green Line open? It's a touchy it's subject. Not <laughs> <to Thomas. laughs> uh, I, I Everything that I have heard is um, this time next year. Okay. Um, and I think they're shooting for June mm -hmm. um, for a, a launch date. Mm -hmm. They're testing trains already, though. Yeah. Okay. And there are, are the uh, bike ride stations along. Yes, yeah. nice ride. The, nice ride. Are there several within the zone between Marion and Hamlet? There are, yeah, the, um, at all of the major intersections, basically. So um, Marion, uh, Victoria, Western, Dale, and Lexington, and Hamlin all have stations. Okay, and on September 15th, are all those bikes going to be gone? You know, what I would be more <laughs> concerned, they, so. they, they might not be gone about 6.30, 
Yeah. Um, when people are heading home, I'd be more concerned about the crush of them coming in. Yeah. Um, but Nice Ride does an excellent job of recirculating all of their bikes. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm sure that they have made contingency plans for making sure they have trucks available to move the bikes back out to other stations mm -hmm. or to make sure they have bikes there for when people are going home, depending on how, on how many people rode in. Mm -hmm. And are, are you encouraging people to like ride in as a family from... Yeah, well, truthfully, I mean, the, ideally, this event is really aimed at the, the neighbors. We want the people in the surrounding community to come out to this event. Um, so, yeah, we are encouraging people to bike and walk, skate, rollerblade, whatever the case may be, to, the, to university and see things, and from everywhere else, too. I'm sure that there is the, the Open Streets events in Minneapolis usually have something like six to 8,000 people come out, um, and I would imagine that they would be very interested interested to see what's happening in St. Paul, too. They seem to really enjoy the events in Minneapolis. In case you're just joining us, this is the St. Paul Forum. I'm John Forty. Today I'm speaking with Damian Goebel and Jun Lee Wong about the upcoming event, St. Paul Open Streets. Uh, Jun Lee, can you tell us a little bit more about just the general overview of it? They're, we're closing the street and we've got the hours. Um, what do you think will be the longer term effects? So I think you know, open streets, you, you said, oh, is this going to be like grand old days? And I think on the one hand, it may sort of look like that, but I think the, the premise is a little bit different. It's really about s celebrating the street mm -hmm. as much as the businesses and the entities that share that street. Um, so, and, and Damien talked about health and alternative modes of transportation and whatnot. And so I think it, it has more of a community sense to it. Um, I think the long-term effects are hopefully that people will sort of um, be reinvigorated or more curious about continuing to come back and discover new things on the street. You know, maybe they saw one thing during open streets and they, they'll think, oh, I need to come back for that again. Or I need to, I didn't realize there were 30 some restaurants within this area. I should go to every single one of them. So I think there, there will be an economic impact on the businesses. Um, I think there hopefully will be a sense of a stronger sense of community around University Avenue because it right now it, it technically divides neighborhoods. I mean, not only is it a wide street, mm -hmm. but if you look at the way that our neighborhoods were divided, it's it's the boundary line between neighborhoods on the north and neighborhoods on the south. And so it's it's not quite as dramatic as the freeway, but there is still that sense of, you know, over there a mm -hmm. little bit. Um, and so I think that it it also can serve to, create a sense of community because I'll run into people that I know during that event who maybe aren't from my neighborhood but I know them some other way and we're there together. Um, so we'll have a sense of this is our shared space. Because so many people will be so intently, intensely concentrated within a, a, a narrow corridor, um, I'm wondering how much outreach there is for things like, I think of Frogtown's uh, urban agriculture, that just one, two, three blocks away, that really could be showcased at an event mm -hmm. like this. Um, are, are people like that kind of reaching in, yes. even though they're not right on the street? Very much so, yeah. And, you know, the, the event is largely focused on uh, businesses, in terms of participation, on businesses along the Green Line. Um, but, for example, Frogtown Farm is doing a cooking demonstration that day. Um, and I, you know some of the martial arts studios that are right off of the Green Line want to participate, and some of the restaurants in Stadium Village want to participate. So uh, we we are opening it to lots of different entities. A lot of the colleges, for example, are interested in participating in some way as well. How how was the, were the ends selected? I mean, if it was me, I'd be like, oh come on, a little bigger, a little bigger, a little bigger. Yeah, <laughs> too many people at the party. Um, you know, that's a great question. Uh, I think largely it had to do with the concentration of businesses mm -hmm. and the, the folks that were most impacted by the construction. Um, so the further west you get, the less concentrated. You hit Walmart and you, you hit stop. Walmart, yeah. right, exactly. <laughs> and not to say that Walmart wasn't impacted and that Walmart is participating in this event too, um, but, you know, some of the smaller businesses and especially the restaurants, as June Lee mentioned, are largely east of Hamlin. Mm -hmm. um, so, and that's a draw for people as well. Food is always a draw for at events like this. Um, how much of it will be families? Do we, do we know? Uh, we're anticipating a large percentage of it will be families. Um, I haven't seen demographic information from Minneapolis, but anecdotally and pictures that I've seen, a lot of it is families or um, groups of friends that are coming out to kind of see what's going on. Okay, and as far as the program goes, there are three stages with bands that have been selected, 
Um, yeah, for the most part, and they're all local bands. Um, I believe some church groups are going to be participating. Um, there'll be a fashion show at one of the stages. Okay. So a few different things going on. Okay. Will there be ongoing committees and things like that to... to that, that is the goal, yes. Okay. Um, and that this is an active conversation, both within the committee that's planning it now and sort of citywide, too. Um, so the organization that I work for, St. Paul Smart Trips, has sort of been tasked with uh, managing that process into the future. Uh, so we're a nonprofit um, that deals with transportation-based education, outreach, and advocacy. So this sort of falls into our purview of things mm -hmm. that we would do. Uh, and this is sort of a national, uh, international phenomenon that's going on also, this open streets concept. Um, so it started in uh, Colombia and has, has sort of grown from there where they would close down a big stretch of street and have these street festivals. They would do it much more frequently there than we're planning on doing it. Um, but cities like New York and Chicago are doing it also. Um, so we're sort of riding the crest of a wave of something that's happening right now. How, how many years has the movement been going on? Oh gosh, about 10 I want to say. Um, off the top of my head, it's escaping me, but it, okay. it's been several years. It, it's, uh, it's and, and in the U.S., it's been reasonably new within the last five years. Okay. And Junlee, you, you're employed by Springboard for the Arts. Yes. How are they involved as an organization? So as an organization, we are bringing artists. We'll be commissioning five artists or artist teams to do specific projects along the corridor during open streets. For us, we, we're in the process of looking at the proposals, and so we haven't selected the teams or the artists yet, but what they will be working on is um, several businesses have sort of parking, some kind of parking lot or open space next to them. Um, and one of the th tricks I think it, during open streets is some people come just to go up and down the avenue, and we really want them to stop and go into a business and look around, maybe buy something, or at least make a note that, oh, I should come back here. And so the teams that we'll be working with will, um, they're sort of tasked with doing some kind of artistic creative activity that will draw people to that site adjacent to a business and maybe get them into the business as well. Um, so this might look like screen printing, it might look like some participatory activity that looks more or less artful. It might be um, interesting, con you know, free conversations. Um, it might be, uh, you know, creating a piece of work that ends up staying in the building or on the facade uh, of a building that everyone who comes by contributes to. So we don't, I can't tell you what they are yet, um, but they will be scattered throughout the corridor. I would think a great deal of it would be staying art. I mean, artists like to leave a, a mark that endures. Yes and no. I mean, art, art is, is all kinds of things. I mean, we have performative art, we have participatory art where it's very much about the moment and the interaction and maybe, you know, some sense of surprise or learning something new or experiencing emotion in a different way. So I think on the one hand, yes, there's sort of permanent or something that has a visual, lasting visual impact, but then there's also the more experiential. So I think we work with artists who, who do all of that. Um, so we'll have to see, you know, if, if you asked, if we were doing this a week from now, I might be able to tell you <laughs> the exact five. Are, are artists working directly with the businesses? I mean, they coordinating so that the business owner doesn't go, that's not the artist I wanted? Right, yeah. So we are working with Asian... It's, it's almost like an NFL draft. <laughs> <laughs> right. You get who you get. Um, no, we, we work in partnership with um, ADA, so Asian Economic Development Association, and U7, which is a sort of business marketing collaborative through the Neighborhood Development Center. And so we're, they have been identifying businesses who are up for this. And so they, the businesses are saying, you know, yes, we're, we're open to whatever, and we have this site right next to us, and then we'll have, we'll pair them with artists or artist teams. Okay, yeah. now uh, we only got about four minutes left, but University Avenue has been there 100 years. It's the train that's new. How much of this is about leveraging the Green Line itself? Frankly, a great deal, honestly. I mean, um, that's one of the goals of this event is to showcase what has been done. But it's not ready. But it's not ready, I know. <laughs> but it's but almost ready. It's almost <laughs> there. Maybe they'll be pulling lines yeah. that day for electrical or something. Maybe we'll happen across a test that day. Um, no, I mean, that, that truthfully is a big part of it. It's leveraging this new infrastructural piece. Um, you know, one of the questions that you asked was, 
the distinction between this and the Minneapolis events. Minneapolis largely targets their events around where they propose to do infrastructure. So where they want to put a bike lane or where they you know, want to mm -hmm. do streetcars, something like that. Whereas we have the infrastructure there. We can show exactly what the street is going to look like. And I think that would be a big draw for people. Now, I would think that when the train goes in, basically the bike lanes are going to go north-south because the train's going east-west. Well, you know, one of the things, uh, there, is, there is a group called the Friendly Streets Initiative, and one of the things that they're actually working on is bike infrastructure on Charles Avenue to make that east-west connection. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah, so that it's not competing directly right. with cars and trains. Yes. Yeah, you're, you're outweighed by 1,000 to 1 or 100 to 1. Exactly. Those are your choices. Yes. Get contact information for, how can people learn more about it? The best place to learn more would be on our website, which is stpaulopenstreets.org, stpaulopenstreets.org. Mm -hmm. Um, we'll have all of the information, including the map and participating businesses on the website. Um, they can also follow uh, St. Paul Open Streets on Twitter and like it on Facebook to keep up to date on information that's going on, uh, as well as find opportunities for participating in the event, not only coming to see what's going on, but also volunteering. We can always use volunteers for a bevy of jobs throughout the day. Okay, and if, if there's an artist watching at this late date, uh, it is now not quite September 1st, so it's still 22 days away, 20, 18 days away, <laughs> something like that, yeah. <laughs> um, can artists still get involved? I'm sure they could, yeah. Okay. I, so from um, Springboard's perspective, I know you closed the, the call for proposals yesterday, right? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> well, this wouldn't make air for yeah. three days, so yeah. Um, but... I'm sure that there are ways we can plug them in if they have an arts project that okay. they can fund. Okay, but you're still seeking volunteers. Yes. And as many people, how, what, what's the, the cattle drive to get, it, get the public to come? Uh, you know, it, it's about having fun on University Avenue and seeing what university has to offer. Um, and being able to walk in the middle of the street without fear of cars running you down also. I think it's a great opportunity to get out on the street. I mean, you don't get to step out into traffic on University Avenue, gonna, and you get to do that. It's going to be a wonderful day, event, and so. I will be there. And I'm sure yeah. you guys will be there. And All day. Yeah. Yes. Okay, all right. Uh, I've been talking with uh, Damian Goebel and Jun Lee Wong about the upcoming event, St. Paul Open Streets, that's on September 15th. You can see more at the website. stpaulopenstreets.org. Okay. That's all we've got time for on the St. Paul Forum. I'm John Forty. We'll see you again next week.